just to show you this beam, I've got it tacked up here. It hasn't been scribed yet. And I don't think the camera is even gonna do it justice, but you can see we're, we're tight up against the drywall right here where the screw is, we're tight. And we come down about a foot and a half and we're at a half inch that needs scribed off there. And by the end down here, we're getting close to five eighths that we need to take off. This is now day four, just got here. It's Saturday morning. Yesterday was kind of a pitiful day of production. So I'm gonna try and get a couple beams knocked out here over the next few hours today. But I wanna show you what I've got here. You'll notice that these two beams are tacked in place. I have tape across the top of these beams. That means that they're ready to scribe. You'll also notice that the way I have them positioned, the bottom of these boards is 5 16 off the bottom of the board that it runs into on all four of these points. So we're going to ideally try to keep the same reveals, if at all possible. So the next thing I have to do, now that I have those tacked in position, is find the biggest gap above the top of the board and then that is going to be the measurement that i'm going to scribe from and cut off the top of those to scribe them tight to the ceiling as you can see we go from being tight right there because there's a big dip in the drywall and then come over here and we've got this large gap but that's just kind of how the ceiling is so what i want to do now is take my tape measure and find the highest point here so that's three quarters of an inch and i'll just move down the board that's 13 16 basically find the biggest measurement i'll make a little block and use that to scribe my highest point was 13 16 so i went ahead and cut a block at a strong 13 16 then we'll use this block with the hawk marking knife to cut the tape line up there and scribe it. Top scribe, use the block plane to get that really nice and tight to the tape line. Now we need to flip it around and rip our 46 degree bevel on the other edge for the bottom of the beam. Some of you might remember this from other recent videos. I'll go ahead and just mark uh, about a 16th to an eighth of an inch offset on the bottom of the board 
and then use my chalk line to mark a straight edge across the bottom here and then we can set the track right on top of that. For the scribe cut, I had it set to 15 degrees, which makes it nice to use with the block plane. Uh, but for this rip cut, we'll want to go all the way to 46 degrees. I find that going to 46 works best to ensure that that outside corner gets nice and tight and looks seamless. to do the beams on this side here. Let me show you these scribe lines. They're pretty bad. So, uh, let's see here how it dives. It'll be interesting to see how that looks after I get these beams up there. It's possible that I end up, you know, installing the beams, scribing them tight to the ceiling but then they may have to float some drywall to make it look halfway decent because it's definitely got some rolls in it. That's really bad right there.
side of the jam my finger into that thing. Always make sure to wipe the blood off of your block clean. Don't make it rust. Something to keep in mind when you're installing mitered beams piece by piece, this 46 degree cut edge here on white oak makes this board the equivalent of a 60 pound knife hanging in the air. So if you tack it with a screw or a nail, make sure that it's holding because if one of these dropped on you or something when you're bent over, it would probably get a little bit messy but uh, I've always had a phobia of that. I'm always really careful because I cannot imagine dropping one of the, having one of these drop on me. It'd be a bad deal. So it's time to cut our bottom piece to length. And the question is, how do you get accurate measurements working by yourself? Well, you need a trusted laser, and that's it. Super simple. Um, Lake Disto D2, I'll link it in the notes, but just put it up here, look at your dot, shoot it three times, make sure you got a consistent measurement, um, and you're good to go. Just a thanks to the many of you who do support the channel by purchasing tools through the affiliate links in the video notes, that helps a lot. I try and list, if I'm using a tool, I'll put it in those links. That's an affiliate link and I get a kickback from that. Um, also check out my Amazon store page. I've got lists of the tools I use like this here. Um, you can find lots of good stuff there. That's always also listed with a link in the video description below the video. get comments about how I work alone installing these big beams and big boards and stuff and it's really not that difficult. You just put one end in, push it up, tack the center and hit your other two ends. So after you've got your center tacked and your ends tacked in place, then you can start working down and aligning your miter and all of that good stuff. So a couple tips, whenever you're trying to do a corner like this, again, it's important 46 degrees, that way you know the outside is gonna come together pretty well. You want a little bit of glue squeeze out. Um, that'll actually help in sealing up that corner after we get to the last step. So after assembly, you know, you burnish it, kind of round over that edge, compressing it with something round. Here I just used the shaft of my chisel. But then the real key is while that glue is still a little bit wet, take some 120 grit sandpaper um, that hasn't been used a ton because you want to create some sawdust. But sanding, whenever there's a little bit of wet glue, that sawdust and glue is gonna mix together and it's gonna just kind of seal that outside corner and it's gonna make it look really seamless. So it's important not to let that glue dry. It's important to get right at that corner after you assemble the beam, hit it 
with a, a nail set or screwdriver, something round to burnish the corner and then sand it right away and get that sand, uh, get that sawdust mixing with that glue and it's gonna make it look really, really good. So it doesn't take much, but uh, that's, that's key if you wanna make things look really crispy. Um, next trick I wanna show you on finishing up these beams you can see we got our bottom pretty tight and it may have actually pushed this beam in a little bit this might have been tighter before but now i got a little bit of a gap there and with dark stain honestly by most people's standards they'd probably just leave it but you can use a stave shim to fill that uh, and it'll look perfect afterwards like you actually cut everything perfect even though you didn't so you can see down here I've got a stack of stave shims. I made these on the table saw before I came this morning, so I've got plenty of them, and they are great for filling any of those small little gaps that you might have. So I'm just gonna show you what both sides of this look like before I use the shim on them. Again, not bad, but could be a little bit better. Now both of our stave shims are inserted with glue just on the front. We don't want to get glue on the back side on the beam. So just very carefully and lightly take our utility knife, score that. It's okay to take a few passes. That's gonna look a lot better um, and it'll look perfect, especially after stain. Over here to the other side. These stave shims are the equivalent of like stain grade caulk for stain grade work. Um, it fills gaps, any mistakes that you might make, they come in extremely handy. Very good trick to have. Just tilt your saw, your table saw over to five degrees to cut these out of some one by, really easy to make. 